Ladies and gentlemen, next up I'm going to invite an industry expert, a member of the private sector himself, a gentleman who is not averse to making his very hard and controversial views known to the entire public, but most especially to the government. And it's a credit to Nita that uh, in spite of him being so vitriolic when he is on the attack, they invite him into the room and give him a podium with two microphones and allow him to use his voice on top of being able to use his pen and his keyboard when he blogs. This gentleman has been a leader in the private sector of ICT for very many years. Of course, I'm sure you can all tell that I'm referring to Mr. James Wire Lungabo. James, you're very welcome. Who is going to come here and tell us a little bit about what he believes Ugandans want and what you, Nita Uganda, and the rest of the government should do in providing this information. James Lungabo. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Kahero, for once I've blushed in a very long time. Eh? <laughs> you know, uh, thank you very much for that introduction. I think you are overrating me. Um, like you said, my name is James Wire. I am basically a blogger. But on the other hand, I'm also a technology and business consultant based in Kampala. Um, where do we want to head? Based on what Nita is presenting here to us today, I want to start with a small story. My mother retired about, I think, six years ago. She was a teacher for very many years. And then she was like, hey, how can I get my pension? First of all, we didn't know the actual procedures to follow. And it was the first time in our family we had someone who we had to chase for pension. But believe you me, despite the connections and the contacts we had, it took us over three years before she got the first payment. And you ask yourself, how about those people out there who have no connections? What happens to them? These are the real issues. I'm not going to talk technology so much because I want to really address the issues that the citizens are concerned about. Okay? At the district level, there is a very big hassle when it comes to pensioners and their money. And we believe or rather, I believe that that can be sorted if we can have uh, some of this integration taking place. I'll go straight to business. With a business hat on, up to today, I still wonder why government has made it a habit to make money through selling bid documents. Yes, I'm very, very pissed with that approach. Every time, bring 100,000, bring 200,000, and they get like 50, 60, sometimes 100 applicants. In this day and age, do you really have to keep printing for us 30 pages, 50 pages, 100 pages, under the guise of wanting to collect money? It's insane. If any organization or department in government still looks at that as a business model, they are living in the 20th century. This is a reminder we're in the 21st century. Hello? Registrations. I'm a parent. But each time my wife gives birth, I'm like, ha, now I have to go to the hospital, first get the other card, then I go to, I don't know where, Okelo House, line up and do this and that. You know, that is all time wasted. I'm just picking out a few but I'll go into details for many different things. But let me just point out a few. Do we have to go through all that hassle? And then again, tomorrow you hear government officials blaming Ugandans for not registering their children. The process has been simply made too hard. A year and, uh, probably a year and a half, yeah, ago, I lost my father. But getting that, is it called the death certificate? 
again, you have to go through this, the other, this, the other. Up to today, we are still failing to handle matters of the estate because again of this, the other, this, the other. If all this information was available and we could simply go to one central resource, especially online, we would cut all these hoops around and we make life easy. Government policies and laws. There are so many laws out there that we need to inform ourselves on and even policies. But getting access to them sometimes is a challenge. I'll use another example here. When the Ministry of Trade launched the Bubu, Buy Uganda, Build Uganda, it took me, I think, three weeks to get the Bubu, what is it, Bubu? Do, I don't know, there was a document anyway. Somehow I landed on it. And they told me there is a policy and I said, okay, can you also give me the policy? Because as a patriotic Ugandan, I wanted to write about Bubu and enlighten others through my blog about why it's important and to show them that Bubu does not stop only at government up here in Kampala, but it goes down to the districts. But up to today, I have still failed to get all the relevant information. And now Bubu is off the map. It's no longer being talked about. But why should it take us more than a month just to get such simple information, which is going to help the government actually uh, send out information about what it's doing through other interested parties? Then you have national statistics. My namesake, Mr. Saka, talked about it. I, I, like I said, I'm also into business consulting, and the number, occasionally I do help people who are coming into the country to invest. But the biggest headache is with statistics. Statistics. You boss, you boss, and I'm saying this without flinching. You tend to make certain statistics seem like they are issues of national security. Why? Put this stuff online. We don't need the clearance of the ED of UBOS just to get statistics on how many fishermen are on Lake Victoria. Is that a matter of security? To know how much fish is got per day at the different landing sites. You go to Minister of Agriculture today, believe you me, you'll get contradictory feedback from different officials within the same ministry. There is a problem somewhere. And hopefully this is one of the steps towards that, uh, solving that problem. Health. We had a situation some time back where there was a patient who was refer who, due to failure to commute to Kampala every time for treatment, had to seek treatment in uh, Mbale. And now, this time that patient came across a very professional doctor who said, no, I'm not going to touch you until I know a record of what has been happening to you, what others have done. It took us another three days. Someone had to come to Kampala and then run around Mulago, ended up paying money just to get the information, the history of the patient. And then that person again had to go back Tumbale, three days. Do we really, is it that bad, really? I think we can do better. I'm optimistic. Drugs monitoring. You know, in Kampala here, you may not know what goes on outside there, uh, in, the, in the countryside. If you spend most of your time in these air-conditioned offices, we are accustomed to. Believe you me, you see me here dressed like this and standing before you, but tomorrow don't be surprised if you see me in the muddy swamps of Dohorai scheme, full of mud with farmers. That's me. So I occasionally use the health facilities in the villages. But you reach there and a doc uh, not a doctor actually, I don't know even what word to use, but anyway, someone in the health center <laughs> let me stop that, is trying to prescribe aspirin for a totally different ailment you have. Then you ask him, but look, I think aspirin can't help on this. Then he's like, that's what we have. So you can just go and relieve your pain. 
you know? And asked, but why don't you have all the drugs? You know, we wrote to the DHO, the, the DHO said he's going to submit all of our requests. And he submits once every two or three weeks. And you think a sick person will wait all that long? I think, again, through integration of some of these systems, you can empower the people at the lowest levels. If the DHO thinks that his job description is to collect uh, requests from the health centers and forward them to Kampala, we can cut out that from his line of the job description. Why can't the other health center workers do that directly? It's possible and it's not expensive if I'm to put on my technology hat. Then uh, you have land matters. We all know what land has become today. In fact, someone was telling me the other day that the best way to keep your land in Uganda today, you put a caveat. Whether you have mortgaged it in the bank or not, just put a caveat so that the thief can know that the first challenge I have now here is to remove that caveat before I can now start stealing this guy's land. Okay? People are always forging left, right, you're having multiple so called titles, and you know. People are suffering out there, and yet some of these boil down to simply lack of the right information that people can access very easily. The other day I did a Google search on a friend of mine who is based in the US, but I was able to see information of the land that that uh, guy owns in some state in the US, complete, and when I went to Google Maps, I even had a a bird's eye view of where his house is and the neighborhood. So the next time we were chatting, I was telling him, hey, by the way, I saw a very nice uh, tree in the corner of your compound. I said, hey, you man, how did you know I had a tree? <laughs> you know, but that's the beauty of technology, okay? So when it comes to land, we should stop making it a mystery, okay? Let's open up. Now, this is the National Land Registry. Let's open up. If you cannot do everything by opening up and availing data to the general public, innovators can come in and they can start plugging into the system. And those innovators can be given an opportunity by doing whatever they are doing to also make money. A quick example, land searches. Why should we all troop to wherever on that, in that new office? Going there, I'm going to do a land search. Now, for me, who lives in Mokono, I have to now run from here. I go to Mokono during the day, then come back to Kampala to work, go and do a land search. Yet, I know very well someone can come up with an app, which I can install on the phone, and I do my land search online, probably using mobile money. I pay a fee, which fee can be split up between the innovator and the registry. Take us out of that bureaucracy. It is dragging us back a lot. The man hours we lose. We already lose enough time in traffic jam. So don't give us an excuse again to lose more time. We need to move faster. And for Uganda's case, we really have to start running, not even just walking. You saw what Estonia is doing. Paper is used in toilets only. Then also, uh, I will end by uh, hinting on the issue of the budgets, the national budgets and the manifesto promises done by the politicians. Many of the promises made in these manifestos and specifically the budget, like the budget of this year, 2017-18, I have issues with it. And I'll write about that at an appropriate time. There are lots of things which have been promised there, especially under agriculture. Oh, we are going to do irrigation, we are going to do this, we are going to support value addition. But when I put on my agriculture hat again, I realize that that is just the kind of talk that I could sometimes compare with, um, uh, uh, you know, more of like love talk. You want to make someone feel nice. You want to make someone feel good. You want to make someone simply have hope and then tomorrow you disappoint them, okay? The reality is, from what I saw in the budget reading, especially in the agriculture sector, I don't expect us to achieve even 50% of what was stated there. And I hope that the minister wasn't misled because he lacked 
information. Probably he was fed with the wrong information. You cannot talk of irrigating Uganda in one year. It has to be just like Nita came up to, uh, to work on the ICT industry. It has taken Nita years of consistent, focused, and strategic approaches to get where we are today. Now, if you're talking irrigation, in one year, you expect to irrigate Uganda? No. My friend Boaz from Israel, you know what it takes. I wrote about this sometime, and I said we might need another irrigation authority, probably, just to deal with only, because I talked to National Water the other day, okay? And they told me our mandate is to provide water to homes and maybe take away sewage. And I said, okay, can we then have an irrigation authority that just supplies water for what? For, yes, irrigation. They put the channels. They know, okay, in this area we can use channels. In this area we shall use sprinklers. They put the backbone. Then for us, in our small farms, we just tap. Like they we do for national water. I hope it makes sense. Okay. So, these promises that sometimes the politicians make, I now realize they are probably premised on the basis of wrong information. And I hope, once again, that through this integration, we can be able to address these issues. Thank you very much.